Hey, Warriors, it's not even cold yet. The bodies aren't even cold yet. And they're already coming out with books, 10 Lessons for the Post-Pandemic World. Best-selling books already hitting the shelves, guys. So I'm going to show you stuff, and I'm going to help open up your eyes to your awareness of where we're heading. Now, the way my brain works is through common sense. I see things. I connect the dots. I use things like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund the World Economic Forum, executive orders, watching the presidential debates and listening to key factors like the Green Deal. I connect the dots, I look forward, and I do my investments. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. This is just common sense. They're giving us the signals. They've been giving us signals for a long time. And the reason why we can't see it is because we're looking this way at the pandemic, and we're looking this way at the C word, and as everybody's looking this way, there's a huge shift of people getting wealthier and wealthier. But if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and take their word for it. This was posted today, five hours ago, from the World Economic Forum, the head of the World Economic Forum, interviewing this gentleman from CNN, who just wrote a book, 10 Lessons of the Post-Pandemic World. Already got the book out. We're not done. It's not over. The pandemic's not over, right? It's coming fast and fierce. And I've been telling you guys exactly what he's saying that the middle class is going to get wiped out. The big companies, Amazon, Walmart, Costco, they are going to crush the competition. Service workers are going to be displaced. I'm here to help you make decisions for your family or open up your awareness so that you can do your research, so you can take part in the biggest shift in generational wealth in history. My name is Coach JV. I am the top health and mindset coach in the world. Other ways you can connect with me is the Coach JV podcast, one of the top motivation podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, Lips, and Stitcher, uh, wherever you consume your podcast. If you also want to join my Warrior Academy of 163 warriors right now, where we talk about this stuff on a daily basis, I show my exact portfolio and how I'm managing the quantum financial system. Them. We keep each other accountable. We have calls on a weekly basis where we keep our warriors focused on, on becoming the uncommon 1%, not being like the 99% looking this way. So let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be remarkable. It's a little choppy, the video, but I'll narrate it as we go along. So make sure that you stay along with me here. Okay. So just listen in. This is, I'll, I'll walk you through really quickly. Just talking a little bit about the basic thesis of the book in a, in a way answering Crystalina's question. One way to think about how uh, extraordinary... So the key I want you to look at really quickly, and I'm going to take you through something. So this is Fareed Zakaria. He's a journalist and CNN host, okay? So we're going to watch this video. We're going to listen to what he says. He has his best-selling book back here already. He's already selling books. So as the poor get poorer, the middle class lose their jobs... They're getting richer. He's writing books and capitalizing on this. So his name is Fred Zarik. He's a journalist at CNN. After we're done with this, I'm going to take you through what CNN is and who they're owned by. And then we're going to do a little Coach JV thinking drill, okay? Extraordinary pandemic consequences have been is to think about what it looks like uh, from the point of view of, you know, a middle class executive in Brazil or India, um, I was talking to such people in the process of writing the book. And uh, an Indian businessman said to me, he said, you know, what's extraordinary about this pandemic is it's had more of an effect on any than any effect, anything that's happened in the last three decades. He said 9-11, 9-11 was something that happened in the United States. You then got outraged by a bunch of people in the Middle East. You waged a few war. Our Travel procedure ports got a little bit different. You know, we had to go through one more metal, metal detector. That was it. Global financial crisis, we didn't have any leveraged products. We didn't have derivatives. We didn't have CDSs. As a result of that, you know, we saw, we saw, we saw the downturn, but our life was not changed much. He said, with the pandemic, every single person I know in India and affected them. And I myself, this may be the only event in our lifetimes that has touched the lives of every human being on the planet. Now let's pause for a moment. Let's get into JV's brain. Why, why was September 11th, like he's saying, not as big as a pandemic? He's talking about the global downturn in 2008. That was a disaster. It never got fixed. So why, ironically, is this happening worldwide as we're transitioning from industrial to technical? 
from our old banking system to the quantum financial system, but it happens to be happening around the same time as a pandemic. You have to listen, warriors. Why is this happening globally? What is happening behind the scenes? Who's connecting the dots so they can move us from the old archaic system to the new quantum financial system? Listen, listen to where you should be moving your assets or your money. In some way or the other. So that gives you, I think, a sense of just the breadth of this. And then you ask yourself, well, what, that, what is it fundamentally doing? I liked and I has, there are decades when nothing happens and then there are weeks when decades happen. So what's really going on here is we have put his- That was important what he just said. There are decades where nothing happens and then there's weeks where decades happen. Guys, we are fast forward into a timeline of 10 years into months. 10 years into months. They are accelerating this so unbelievably fast. History on fast forward. We are massively uh, accelerating many of the trends that were already underway, but in the dramatic change uh, in pace is itself a qualitative change. Think about what we were just talking about with the uh, digital life. You know, we are all much more comfortable with the digital life that I think would have taken us 10 years to get to. We see that in healthcare. We see that in all kinds of places. So the question is, you know, what does that do uh, as we go forward? Let me- So notice what he said right there. Digital, 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 digital. Outline two or three areas that I think we need to be thinking carefully about, and in particular, are, the, are important for the IMF. The central one uh, is, of course, the the most worrisome uh, acceleration that is taking place as a result of the pandemic. The most consequential dark cloud that I see out there, which is the massive exacerbation of inequality at every level so what this means a massive exaggeration of inequality that means right now the 634 richest people in the world became much wealthier during the pandemic and the poor became poor there's this huge separation in between the rich and poor so first there is the inequality that comes from the rich countries having the capacity to absorb this kind of pandemic and the shutdowns that come out of it in a way that poor countries are not um, the second is the ability of rich countries to issue debt in a way that poor countries cannot. You know, we, 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 it was always partly an intellectual issue that constrained a country like the United States. You know, we don't know what the parameters are in terms of how much debt you can issue, um, but we know that we are going to test those parameters. But I think most of us would agree that there's very little doubt that the United States, the European Union, China, can issue more debt. Substan okay, what they're saying is he's letting us know it's the game's over. We can't keep issuing debt. We can't keep printing money. The biggest countries can't keep doing this. Poverty countries can't even pay their debt. And so we're on the precipice of an economic collapse. This is huge. Listen to what he's saying. Substantially more debt. That is not true, obviously, for the Indias, the Brazils, the Mexicos, the Turkeys of the world. And so you are going to begin to see that divide. You're going to see it in the world of, of uh, companies and, and corporations. This is important. The, my book talks about this, but my book is itself an example of this uh, divide taking place in corporate uh, life. So book publishing is actually one of these areas that has listen, benefited listen. from uh, COVID-19. I shouldn't say benefited, but the point is book sales are up. Okay, so he wrote a book that's already out that says 10 lessons right behind him for the post-pandemic world. It's not over yet. You're already, they're taking advantage of the, he's a smart man. He's writing books to take advantage of the marketplace. Listen. Uh, up there, up about 15%. It turns out not everybody is watching TV. Uh, some people are using the time to read books. But in February of 2020, listen, Amazon listen. was 30% of the American book sales market. Today, it is about 65% of the American book sales market. So I've been telling you guys this. This is going to benefit the Walmarts, the Amazon, the Costcos, the small mom power are going to get crushed. Are you ready? In other words, the market share increase of the biggest player has dramatically expanded. My guess is we don't have good data on this yet. The same is going to be true of Walmart, of Home Depot, 
of Duane Reed, of all, in other words, if you are a large brand that is active on the digital, in, in the digital space. Active in the digital space. V-Chain, V-Chain, already with H&M, Nike, big brands. If you have deep lines of credit, diversified businesses, uh, the ability to sustain these kind of downturns, strong brand net recognition, you are going to do well. You are going to gain market. And where do they get that from? They're the richest people in the world. Where do they get that money from? Look up the Cantillon effect. And who has lost out here? All those independent bookstores. Us. Or even the small regional chains. They are all much less able to survive. I see this in New York City. Even the, the restaurants. About a third of restaurants have already collapsed. Another third are likely to shut down. Who are surviving? It is the restaurants that have a strong brand name, often five to seven restaurants, you know, a chain of some kind, uh, the ability to withstand it. Basically, the people that are getting the funding, the Cantillon effect, the richest companies are getting the funding first. The small mom paws are getting left out. I didn't get any PPP money. I applied for everything. The, the ability to invest in heating lamps and th you know things like that, and who's losing out? The smallest of them. And then finally, of course, at a personal level, we are all functioning reasonably well in this pandemic. Um, you're all doing your jobs. I'm able to do mine. This is a little awkward. It would have been more fun to do this uh, in person. And I do believe we lose something. But functionally, we are able to continue to do our jobs and generate uh, income. Yeah, you are. You're part of CNN. You got your new bestseller book out. If you work in a restaurant, a hotel, a retail mall, a cruise ship, a theme park, this is the Great Depression. Right? Oh, what have I been saying, guys? What have I been saying? This was posted five hours ago from the World Economic Forum. What did he just say from CNN? He's a reporter from CNN. He just said exactly what I've been saying for the last six months. Service workers, restaurant workers, barber shops, amusement parks, hotels, you have to get ready. Right? I think that the, the and I think it's, very difficult. People have not completely realized that, partly because in America, the CARES Act actually had a, I mean, it's a lot of money. When you think about it, $2.2 trillion, um, it has cushioned the blow for a long time. The money is running out. But the reality is that there is this dramatic decline in unemployment for the lowest wage people. So that is the, you know, the, the inequality that worries me the most, probably. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what he meant to say is the unemployment is dramatically increasing. Okay, so that gives you an aspect of what the IMF is talking about. They're writing best-selling books. They're getting ready for the new quantum financial system. What are you doing? Okay, so let's talk about CNN a little bit. So who does CNN own? It, CNN is owned by Turner Broadcast System. So Turner Broadcast System in America Television, media conglomerate, parts of AT&T, Warner Media, founded by Ten Turner in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's break down the, the places they think. I've talked about predictive programming. Time Warner has TBS, TNT, CNN, Turner Classic Movies, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, True TV, CNN Center, Downtown Atlanta, Midtown Atlanta, Turner Studios. Uh, they got all HBO, um, AT&T Sports Network. Um, let's see. I could go on and on. The list goes on and on and on. What are all those things that you're watching on TV, okay? So these are things to think about, Warriors. So what is he saying? The post-pandemic, and I've been saying that small mom paws are going to get crushed. So what would you do? If you had the answer, if you have the playbook, you can't be played. If you know what's happening right now, he's telling us, he's part of CNN, he's telling us, he wrote a book about it already. The pandemic's not even over, post-pandemic. Is it over for you? No, you're suffering, right? So what would you do, Warriors? If you know that Amazon, Walmart, Costco, Home Depot, the large corporations, malls are going to get crushed. Where would you invest your money? Think about that, Warriors. Who's going to connect all this in the quantum financial system? How many times did he say electronics, technical, digital? Warriors, the answers are right in front of you. That's how I do my investments, Warriors. So it's time for you to protect yourself. The elites are telling you exactly what to do. They're just packaging it in this pandemic thing. Why is this happening globally? Why is this happening globally? Because the Great Reset is here. The World Economic Forum already told us, and I reacted to it over a year ago, and here we are, Warriors. So if you want to learn how to protect yourself, 
go down there, join the free Facebook group if you'd like to, or click and join our Warrior Academy right now. Join a group of warriors where I'm coaching and teaching. Number one, we work out together, nutrition. We have a mindset coaching program, economics, and also I show my exact portfolio and exactly what I'm doing and how I'm investing in the quantum financial system. Not a financial advisor, none of it's financial advice. I just show you exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. That's really important. So let's go get it, warriors. Warriors, rise. Let's go.